the most difficult but also the most important role of the rabbi is to be there when a congregant approaches and has an end-of-life question. A congregant comes and explains that their dear one is at the end. They're in an irreversible state. But they're connected to machines and, they're, and their heart is strong and therefore they can live for an extended but unknown length of time. How does the rabbi, how do I address that congregant? The first thing that needs to happen is you have to collect the data. You have to find out what does it mean an irreversible state? One person's irreversible state may not be what someone else understands as an irreversible state. Sometimes a rabbi has to, and often the rabbi has to, speak to the doctor and find out what is the medical condition. What exactly is the medical condition? Secondly, the rabbi needs to understand the family dynamic. Is the family all in agreement about how they want to deal with this situation? Was there one family member who was appointed as an agent to make the decision for the person? Or is everybody making the decision together? Once the data is collected, then it's time for the rabbi to share his personal, his rabbinic, and his moral advice and thoughts. On this, I think that the Jewish law tells us several important things. The first thing is that Jewish law does not allow for the pulling of the plug. Pulling of the plug, which would cause automatic and instantaneous death, is not allowed according to Jewish law. But that creates a very difficult situation for a family that wants to end the person's life in an irreversible state, and a family which believes that the person who's in that state would not want to live in such a state for an extended period. So what does Jewish law allow? Even though Jewish law does not allow the pulling of the plug, however, there's at least one alternative that can and has been used to help hasten the end. And that is to reduce, or in some cases to eliminate, the nutrition that the patient receives. By reducing that nutrition, and of course by eliminating that nutrition, the person will not die instantaneously, but their end will be hastened. And in that way, the family's wishes will be, will be taken into consideration. The person who's on life support, their needs and concerns will be taken into consideration. But Jewish law will be respected and followed. I conclude where I began. This is the most difficult question that a rabbi receives, but it's also the most important one.